That was a scene from Terminator 3 by Warner Brothers Pictures, owned by CNN's parent company, Time Warner. In the sci-fi thriller Skynet Machines, battle humans for control of the planet. And this is video of Mabel, one of the fastest two-legged robots in the world today. Okay, not exactly the same. No guns, of course. No action heroes. But still pretty freaky, right? It really looks human. Look at her run around, Mabel. Uh, Mabel can run, get this, a nine-minute mile. That's pretty darn good. And keep her balance while reacting to rough terrain like an eight-inch blind step down. Of course, try doing that in high heels. Trust me, not easy. Mabel's creators say she's been built to save lives in search and rescue missions and to create exoskeletons for people who are paralyzed. Pretty amazing and the subject of today's Big Eye. Joining me now is one of Mabel's creators, Jesse Grizzle, professor of electrical engineering and computer science at the University of Michigan. Thank you, Jesse, so much for uh, joining us on the show today and bringing, it looks like, Mabel with you. Um, first, uh, Mabel doesn't exactly sound like the name of an amazing futuristic robot. So what does it actually stand for? Well, Mabel is um, short for Michigan Anthropomorphic Biped with Electric Legs. And the last part sounds a little strange, Electric Legs, but Mabel is powered by four, four electric motors. And when we were naming the robot, I wanted a name that would have M for Michigan and B for uh, Biped. The rest of it just kind of fell, in, fell into place, so Mabel. And, and I'm fascinated, honestly, by Mabel's um, knees. I mean, this is not, this is pretty rare, right, for a robot to be able to move like this? Yes, we're, what we're doing in this lab is working on the feedback algorithm. So these are the algorithms that are measuring the position and speed of all the robot's various joints. They're doing that once every millisecond, so a thousand times per second. We're monitoring the position and speed of the robot's joints. We calculate where the, what these joints should be doing, and then we adjust the power commands to the motor such that the robot does play out the right responses to variations in terrain, etc. So the general field is called the feedback control. I'm a feedback control theorist who applies these methods to robots like Mabel. So Mabel is really cool. I mean, we, we all agree with that, but it's also... On a, on a pretty serious mission. I mean, how, how would Mabel help save lives, say, on a search and rescue mission? Well, I mean, one scenario I kind of have in mind that motivates me is if, imagine a home is on fire and you're pretty sure everyone has gotten out, but there's a small chance someone is in. So is it ethically right to send in a fireman when there's really 98% of the chance we're sure we got everyone out but if there's a machine that you could send in and do it, well, then the ethical dilemma becomes much less. So mm -hmm. what we want is a robot that could go into an environment that's occupied by humans. So it needs to be able to go in, step over the baby's toys, go running up the steps, grab, uh, open the uh, closet doors, make a quick uh, reconnaissance of the building, come yeah. charging out. And so having a robot that can function in a human environment is important. Now, the reason we want it to be able to handle this very rough terrain is that if you're in a dangerous situation, once again, like a fire or an industrial building that has problems, then there's going to be smoke, dust, and debris, and cameras are easily fooled. So you want the robot that even if the foot placements are not what the camera tells it to be, it's not going to fall flat on its face. Right with a small change, and that's what Mabel is doing in a brilliant way. Uh, you know, as we're talking to you, we're also watching some video of Mabel at work, and it's just so human-like. Uh, it, it is really creepy, but it's amazing to watch. Um, what about helping uh, paralyzed people? H how would Mabel be able to do so? Well, there are groups of people that are taking the uh, technology that a whole wide community of us working in the uh, robotics field are trying to uh, push forward. So. The idea with the exoskeletons is you build a robotic structure that is outside of your leg, for example. So the outside, it goes out, outside of your leg, that's why it's called an exoskeleton. And then the knee, the knee joints, the hip joints, perhaps the ankle joints are well, are powered, just like on a uh, bipedal robot like Mabel. And so if you can take the principles of having a machine that is able to guard, to uh, maintain its balance and walk at a brisk, brisk pace, stop, change directions, etc. then you can take those principles and apply it to this kind of merger of a human and a 
and a uh, machine. Hmm. And I do want to underline that people working on exoskeletons have a much more difficult problem than the one I am facing because you have all the complexities of the uh, human body plus all of the mechanical and electrical complexities of, of the exoskeleton. Yeah.